Why do you look so weird right now? <laughs> Hello, first vlog with the new hair. So the first thing I need to do is I need to unbox my new iPhone because I've had this for a few weeks now, I think. And I've been waiting to vlog to, you know, unbox it for you because obviously that's so satisfying. But I've just been really like down recently, but it's time. It's finally time to open it. And obviously this is a very exciting thing. So I'm very excited. So I got the new iPhone 14 Pro Max and honestly, like I have the iPhone 13 Pro Max and honestly, like there's not really a huge difference between the two, but I just thought, you know, obviously the slightly better camera and I do a lot of my work on my phone. So I was like, let's just do it. And I actually got a really good trade in value for my current phone. So I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> so very exciting moment. And also I'm really excited because I've had like space gray phones for years, but I got a fun different color this time. Oh, look at that. Oh my God, <laughs> so satisfying. So I got the silver. Cause I was also thinking about like my cases, like which color will look good with the cases that I usually use. And here is the phone. I think I'm also going to set it up because I haven't got the new iOS 16. I've seen all the fun things you can do with iOS 16, but I didn't update on my current phone because like I didn't have enough space. Anyway, so I'm really excited to set it up and kind of have like a what's in my iPhone moment. Oh my god, just, wow. it's like kind of like matte vibes. So pretty, but obviously I'm not gonna leave it naked because that is very dangerous. So we need to have the protection. So who's come to the rescue? Casetify, and they are sponsoring this video. So thank you so much to them. So Casetify sent me some new cases for my new phone and I'm so excited. If you don't know, Casetify is where I get all my iPhone cases. I also have my iPad case in there and I actually haven't opened the box yet. So we're doing like the full unboxing moment together. Beautiful packaging. Oh, look at them. I drop my phone a lot. And when my phone is wearing a case to my case, I know I don't need to stress about my phone being cracked because they are so protective while also maintaining a stunning sleek design. So they're not like chunky. So your phone looks cute while also being protected. And they have so many curated prints like this one. This cherub design was actually one I had for my previous phone. And I just love it so much. So I got it for this and also it will look really different because I now have the silver case. Oh, like how pretty is that? Obviously it's not on properly, but that is stunning. So yeah, they have heaps of curated prints, but they also have lots of customizable prints. So for example, I'm really excited about this one. They did a collaboration with Valfrey, who are one of my favorite brands. And when I saw that collaboration, I was like, oh my goodness, plus I could customize it. So I got this design with the cute little devil girly and obviously write my name chloe look at that oh i just love it and then the other customized one i got was this so it just says my name and this is actually one of the new fonts that they have so i was like oh i love that and you can also choose like the layout the color of the font you can really customize it to make it your perfect case oh how stunning the last case I got was one of their curated prints, which is this really stunning butterfly one. And another thing that's really exciting is that Casetify's newest protection technology, EcoShock, is embedded in all of their new iPhone 14 Impact Series cases. So with over 20% increased protection, you know your phone's even safer while also maintaining that stunning slim design. So the new cases that feature the EcoShock technology now have an 11.5 feet drop height. So you really don't need to stress about dropping your phone. Casetify have actually worked with over 300 artists from all across the world. So they've created this diverse community that links people together to truly express themselves through art, which you know I'm all about. Another thing I really appreciate about Casetify is the attention to detail. So their cases feature a raised camera ring, so your camera is protected. They also have the raised top bezel and the raised side bezel. So this gives extra screen protection without sacrificing swipe convenience. And in addition to all of these amazing features, Casetify are also eco-conscious, which is very important to me. So they actually have a program called called Recasetify, which is where they take old cases and recycle them into new cases. So they've actually had 51,000 phone cases recycled with the Recasetify program. 
and by doing so they've achieved a 20% carbon emission reduction. And you can go to casefy.com slash books with Chloe to get 15% off your order. So thank you so much to Casefy for sponsoring this video and for all my stunning new cases. It's definitely hard to decide which one I want to wear now, but I think this is my current vibe and I just love it, like all the details. So now I need to set this up. I don't know if I have time to fully set it up now, but when I do, I will definitely show you, like give you a fun little tour because I also want to talk about some of my favorite apps because I feel like I have so many crucial like day-to-day -day apps that I use that I just need to talk about. In terms of what I'm currently reading, I'm currently reading Babel and I'm loving that, but I'm going to continue reading that for my Dark Academia blog volume two. And honestly, I haven't really been reading much this month. It's just been a very weird month. And you know, usually I love reading the fun October spooky books, but... I don't think I've read one. <laughs> I'm hoping to film like a Halloween, you know, reading vlog sometime this week. So I'll definitely try to read some spooky books then. But I'm also just like kind of not really in that vibe right now. Like this morning we had a fun double feature on my Patreon where we watched Nightmare Before Christmas and Frank and Weenie, which I really loved. But yeah, I haven't really been watching many spooky films, reading many spooky books and stuff. I've just kind of not really been in that vibe right now. And I'm obviously not going to force it just because it's October. And to be honest, what I want to read right now, The Mountain Is You by Brianna Weist. I've just been really feeling disconnected and like, you know, prioritizing myself and my mental health and all that. So I just, I've been feeling a pull to read this recently. So this is about transforming self-sabotage into self-mastery and I've heard really good things about it. Much like nature, life is very often working in our favor, even when it seems like we are only being faced with adversity, discomfort and change. As forest fires are essential to the ecology of the environment, opening new seeds that require heat to sprout and rebuild a population of trees, our minds also go through periodic episodes of positive disintegration or a cleansing through which we release and renew our self-concept. See, that's exactly what I feel right now. So I'm really excited. I definitely want to try and read some. Actually, no, I'll definitely be reading some tonight when I get home. So I'm very excited. Sorry, I just flipped to a random page. We do not ever need to feel embarrassed or wrong for needing to cry, feel down, or miss what we no longer have. In fact, crying at appropriate times is one of the biggest signs of mental strength, as people who are struggling often find it difficult to release their feelings and be vulnerable. Okay, I'm very excited about this. I almost forgot that I have another package to open. So it's in this box, and I'm very excited, so I know what this is. Insight Editions asked if I wanted this, and I was like, um, yes, please because it looks amazing and I'm sure a lot of you will like it too. This is the Studio Ghibli cookbook. I love Studio Ghibli and obviously the food in Studio Ghibli films always look incredible. So I'm very excited about this. And it's also just like a super cute book. Oh my gosh, let's go to Kiki's Delivery Service. Okay, we got Kiki's Delivery Service. Herring and pumpkin pie. Now, not gonna lie, I'm not a huge fan of pumpkin, so the thought of a pumpkin pie, I don't think I'd love it, but it obviously is iconic from the film, and I've always wanted to make it just for the vibes. <laughs> Maybe it's my sign to like give it a chance. Oh my god, so cute, the difficulty. I think I mentioned before that I want to do like a fun like cooking video so maybe I can also cook something from this. I have been slacking with my cooking but I really do love cooking and baking and there's also like some fun ingredients in here. Oh sorry, do I say ingredients? Desserts. <laughs> Kiki's Let Me Service chocolate cake. Look, I definitely need to make that. Are you kidding?
pull the hips down and walk the blocks back so now they're right by your hips. Again, hips back. And you're on your feet. Reset, breathe in center. Exhale, right. Release, climb it up. Take hands and knees. Take an arching curl. Start by the wall. And now arch, breathe in. Okay, time to show you my phone. So this is my wallpaper, Megan the Stallion being iconic. I love how you can now customize the font and colors, like so fun. And how you can also now switch between wallpapers, so cool. So this is my home screen. Oh my god, it looks so cute. <laughs> So basically I customized most of the apps. So I actually created a folder on my Pinterest for all the app icons if you want to use them. I just found them all on Pinterest. But yes, of course, calendar, reminders, Gmail, mail. Cute little photo of me and Caitlin Bunny. Chrome, photos. Let me try to scroll and see if I can show you a photo that it lands on. It's not the time. You just, you steal your phone, you know. There's no one here. A monkey. <laughs> <laughs> This is me and Tess in Bali. That reminds me, I still have to edit and upload my Bali vlog from July. Anyway, YouTube, of course I had to use a bunny icon. Spotify, here are some of my playlists. My notes app, which once again I used a cute little bunny icon. Voice memos, and these are just for like my lighting and stuff. Pinterest, Instagram, stretch it. Now this app, I've literally only been using it for like a day, but I am loving it. So I really want to get my splits. So it has like, I think it's like a 30 day splits challenge. And I'm really excited because I did the first class and really loved the way that it was set up. Really loved the teacher. And I really like the layout of the app and stuff. So I think I'm going to continue with it. So I'm currently doing the seven day free trial. I also have Audible and I am currently listening to, I actually just started a new audiobook. Trick Mirror or Reflections on Self Delusion by Gia Tolentino. And this is a nonfiction. Really enjoying the audiobook. The first chapter was all about, like, you know, our online presence and how we perceive ourselves through our online presence and stuff. So it was really interesting. So, really loving that. And then, of course, I have messages. Let's see. Oh, yes. <laughs> My latest messages to Caitlin. And I sent this really hilarious video. <laughs> I love it. Then, of course, I have the clock app. Oh my god, how cute. This is the camera, and it has a little bunny holding a camera. And then, of course, the phone button. And then the second page just is all sorted into folders, so boring. But yeah, this is the main show. And if you're wondering, it took like an hour to do, and I love it. Now to quickly show you some of my favorite iPad apps. I haven't done the, you know, fun app icon changes, so I definitely want to do that, but mind you how? Oh, I was gonna say do it every day, but clearly I didn't do it on Monday. <laughs> but I had a really bad day yesterday. Anyway, <laughs> I love mind pal. I try to do it every day, and basically it's daily brain exercises. For example, you know, we've got work connect. I also am loving Lucid and basically this is a learning app and it has heaps of different topics. So for example, there are some quick reads, the proven power of self-compassion. And I really love it because, you know, it's just a quick and fun way to consume extra knowledge on different topics. And I also love the fun, like, graphics. On a scale of one to five, how often do you behave in the following ways? I can be a bit cold-hearted towards myself when I'm experiencing suffering. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I'm definitely relating to that at the moment. <laughs> For many, the term self-compassion can feel self-indulgent, self-pitying, and just plain selfish. This is especially true in American society. Why does being understanding and kind to ourselves feel irresponsible when being compassionate to others feels right and good? We're better at putting others' failures into perspective. This kind of thinking causes additional suffering people. <laughs> When we practice self-compassion during difficult moments, our bodies release hormones promoting calm and security. So yeah, love Lucid. And then of course, Switchcraft. Love Switchcraft. Actually, let's see what level I'm on. Level 245. I always tell Kevin that Candy Crush is the BWM version of this game. 
and this game rolls with the LGBT. And it's just so much more fun and magical, I love it. Oh, exactly, a fun combo. Let's go. Thank you, absolutely thank you. Absolutely thank you. Oh my god, we've got, oh my god, exactly this, yeah. And lastly, Disney Jigsaw, I actually just played a game today. <laughs> it was like a 16 piece puzzle, but sometimes you just need to get that quick sense of accomplishment. Oh my god, look at all these fun Halloween puzzles. In case you haven't seen, this is my iPad case from Case to Buy. I love it a lot. So look at my cute Case to Buy products together. Oh my god, it's so cute. So at my most recent meetup I met Kitty and she had the most stunning curls and I complimented her on them and then she was like oh yeah they're the um it's the heatless hair curler from Strands of Silk. So I'm gonna test it out. I've dampened my hair. Okay, place the ribbon and secure. Okay. While I'm doing this, I might as well talk about the channels that I'm really obsessed with right now. Mina Lay and Shan Spear. It's exactly the type of content I love to watch. Basically just like talking about lots of different topics. So for example, I'm watching Explaining the Old Money Aesthetic by Mina Lay. Definitely recommend checking them out. I also hope I'm doing this right. Maybe I didn't dampen my hair enough. Anyway, we'll just hope for the best in the morning. Okay, secure at the end. My name is Angela, hey hello, welcome to my very own show. Obviously I want to try to limit the amount of heat I use on my hair, so I really hope I like the results. Shooby dooby doo wow wow, my name is Angela. Was not a fan of Angela Anaconda to be honest. It was one of those shows that would come on and I'm like, ugh, fine I'll watch it. <laughs> it's just so funny, cause like, obviously growing up I didn't have like streaming and stuff, so Sometimes you're watching TV and you're just like, ugh, I guess I'll settle for this. So one of those shows was Angela Anaconda and like the stress of like watching something and then, you know, mom's like, dinner's ready and I'm like, no, like, you know, if I don't watch it now, like I can never watch it again. Well, I don't know if I'll be able to watch it again. And I remember like I loved this show called, I think it was Girls in Love. I think it was always on like around dinner time. So I'd be watching it and then mom's like, dinner's ready. And I'm like, mom, like I need to finish this episode. Mom, it's my favorite show. And she's like, I swear you say that every time. I'm like, yeah, because it's always on when we have dinner. But yeah, also that show, I think that's when I like first saw someone cheat. The main character went to this party and then she saw her boyfriend kissing another girl. I think that was the first time I truly experienced heartbreak. I was like, what are you doing, Lido? I was shocked and disgusted and devastated. <laughs> anyway, okay, so this is the final look. We'll show you the results in the morning. Scruffy. Look at the handsome boy. Scruffy. You are funny, aren't you? Scruffy keeps doing the splits. He's always done that, but I feel like he's doing it more often recently. And I think it's to mock me because He's like, Mom, I see you trying to do the split so I can already do it. <laughs> I'm just getting ready. 
and this is what my hair looks like. So it was actually tighter than this and then I brushed it out. So yeah, it looks pretty good. I might like fix it up a bit like around the face with a curling iron. <laughs> I forgot what it was called for a second. I'm just getting ready so my makeup isn't finished, but I'm gonna do some filming today. I love you, good boy. You're my best friend. <laughs> wow, look at you. Oh, he's like, piss off. I want my personal space. Typical. Judas, Judas. finished getting ready and yeah I just touched up my hair with a few curls but honestly stunning like really impressed with the results so thank you kitty but yeah now I'm just going to film a video for my patreon I'm filming a video talking about my favorite horror films oh Zagarapi coming to say hello are you look at my beautiful boy wearing his skeleton <laughs> He's such a silly old man. <laughs> literally, he's just so, like, he's literally the TikTok sound, like, oh lordy lord, today drain tree. <laughs> like, he's just sleeping all day. Silly boy. Disturbia, disturbia. Bam, bam, be dam, bam, bam, be. Ew, what was that tone? Bum bum be dum bum bum be dum what's wrong with me? Bum bum be dum bum bum be why do I feel like this? Bum bum Oh look yeah shy when he has a friend little penguin anyway I need fun <laughs> So I'm finally getting around to reading some of this and I just read the introduction and already <laughs> wow I need to read some when we can no longer rely on our coping mechanisms to help distract us from the problems in our lives it can feel as though we've hit rock bottom the reality is that this sort of awakening is what happens when we finally come to terms with the problems that have existed for a long time your mountain requires you to reconcile two parts of you the conscious and the unconscious 
the part of you that is aware of what you want and the part of you that is not aware of why you are still holding yourself back. The objective of being human is to grow. Honestly, I feel like so many people are afraid of change and I get it, but I also don't get it because, you know, I know change can be uncomfortable, but like it says here, the objective of being human is to grow. Like I always want to be growing. I always want to be changing and bettering myself. And when people say you've changed as an insult, I'm like, like obviously you can change in a bad way, but if you were to say like, oh, you're so different, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm constantly having new experiences. I'm constantly learning more about the world, humans, myself. Like, of course I'm going to change. And I always am trying to like work on myself and trying to be as self-aware as I can be. And, you know, acknowledge the issues that I may have. And, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, you know what? Like, I'm cool. Like, <laughs> but then a year passes and I'm like, ew, who was that? Like literally, me, your girl, I'm like, like obviously I'm proud of her, but I'm also like, you still have a lot of growing to do and I'm sure like me in a year from now we'll like look back at this and be like classic rookie Chloe like I don't know you know we're just constantly evolving and changing and I think one of the best ways to cope with life's challenges is to see them as learning experiences so I really love this our ability to feel the depth and beauty of life is capable of expanding forever inward if we are willing to take our problems and see them as catalysts the fact that you are imperfect is not a sign that you have failed. It is a sign that you're human and more importantly, it is a sign that you still have more potential within you. You must release your old self into the fire of your vision and be willing to think in a way you have never even tried before. You must mourn the loss of your younger self, the person who has gotten you this far, but who is no longer equipped to carry you onward. Oh my goodness. They're talking about self-sabotage. Sometimes we sabotage our healing journey by psychoanalyzing our feelings because doing so ensures we avoid actually experiencing them. Sometimes we sabotage our self-talk because if we believed in ourselves, we'd feel free to get back out in the world and take risks and that would leave us vulnerable. So self-sabotage is a coping mechanism. But like any coping mechanism, it is just that, a way to cope. It's not an answer. It's not a solution. Oh my God, I feel like I'm just going to want to read this whole book to you, but obviously I won't do that. But wow, like already. I need to read this bit because I was talking about how people like hate change and stuff. So humans tend to hate unfamiliarity because anything that is foreign, no matter how good, will also be uncomfortable until it is also familiar. This often leads people to confuse the discomfort of the unknown with being wrong or bad or ominous. However, it is simply a matter of psychological adjustment. We are programmed to seek what we've known. Even though we think we're after happiness, we're actually trying to find whatever we're most used to. I feel like I definitely used to live this way, which obviously led to a lot of unhappiness which is why i'm so passionate about like you know really doing that uncomfortable work and diving into yourself and your beliefs about yourself and you know questioning everything like questioning are you actually happy in your relationships are you actually happy living the life that you currently live are you able to change any aspects of it to live a more authentic you and it's also why i'm really open to trying like all new things because you might discover something new about yourself or a new passion yeah so I'm loving this. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But this is just so interesting. What you believe about your life is what you will make true about your life. So, for example, if you've spent years telling yourself, I'm an anxious person, you might actually start to identify with it, adopting anxiety and fear into your belief system about who you fundamentally are. This is so interesting because, for example, I used to think I was an angry person, which I'm definitely not. <laughs> but that's because I was surrounded by people who constantly annoyed me because they would say something like racist or homophobic or whatever so i'd be like obviously like ew and i feel like i was known as that like serious angry person but that's not the truth of who i am and that's just because i was in the wrong environment and also i was diagnosed with anxiety when i was 17 and i was like oh and obviously it's good to have a diagnosis it was helpful to understand why i acted in certain ways but i think i also used that as like a crutch for years it's like oh no i'm just anxious like I'm not going to do this because it will just cause me anxiety. But that definitely inhibited my growth and me experiencing new things because I would just always be like, oh, well, I have anxiety, like, you know. And obviously I understand, like, anxiety can prevent a lot of people from doing things, but basically what I'm trying to say is don't try to just use your beliefs that might not even be true about yourself as an excuse or as a way of just, like, living comfortably and, like, not doing the work, experiencing new things, etc. Hopefully I'm explaining what I'm trying to say well enough, but yeah, it's very interesting.
Another example is me thinking I was an introvert for so long. I did the Myers-Briggs personality test when I was like really depressed. So I did not want to engage with the world. I didn't want to talk to people. I just wanted to be alone and cry. So I got INFJ and I related to that at the time. I've always loved talking to people and connecting and going out and meeting new people. But by that point, I had so much hurt that I just didn't want to risk any further hurt. So I just kind of wanted to be a recluse. So I was like, yeah, I'm an introvert. And then I labeled myself as that for so long. But then I always had this craving of like, you know, something was missing because I wasn't meeting new people, not getting enough social interaction. And that's because, well, to be honest, I have a whole discussion on like introvert and extrovert that I want to get into in another video, but I definitely lean more towards extrovert. Like I need to talk to people like a lot <laughs> to stay sane and to feel fulfilled. But because I labeled myself as the introvert, which was not even true or if it was true at the time obviously you can change i really limited myself i'm so annoyed that i held on to that belief for so long anyway yes really question and observe your pre-existing beliefs in an effort to love ourselves we try to validate everything about who we are yet those warm sentiments never quite seem to stick only ever temporarily numbing the discomfort why don't they work because deep down we know we are not quite being who we want to be and until we accept this we are never going to find peace What's being discussed here is definitely what's being left out in a lot of the like mainstream like love yourself discussions I feel because it's obviously not that simple and in order to like fully love yourself you need to do the deep uncomfortable work. The greatest act of self-love is to no longer accept a life you're unhappy with. It is to be able to state the problem plainly and in a straightforward manner. When we're in denial we tend to go into blame mode. We look for anyone or anything to explain why we are the way we are. Then we start justifying. I'm sure most of you know someone who is like this. Anytime there's something wrong in their life, they blame someone or something. Also, Frederick is hanging out in that chair. I literally feel like crying right now. Okay, so they're talking about how a lot of the time this huge change comes from hitting rock bottom because you decide that you truly never want to feel like that again. And my rock bottom was definitely me after my breakup and all of my unhealthy coping mechanisms came to the surface and I just realized a lot and I wasn't addressing a lot of things that I needed to address. Anyway, so it's talking about how to prepare for radical change and it says one of the biggest reasons that people avoid doing important internal work is that they recognize if they heal themselves, their lives will change sometimes drastically. Your new life is going to cost you your old one. It's going to cost you your comfort zone and your sense of direction. It's going to cost you relationships and friends. It's going to cost you being liked and understood. It doesn't matter. The people who are meant for you are going to meet you on the other side. You're going to build a new comfort zone around the things that actually move you forward. Instead of being liked, you're going to be loved. Instead of being understood, you're going to be seen. Like, that is exactly what I have experienced. Obviously, it's like the best thing I could have done to really put in that work and like I'm truly surrounded by people who make me feel loved, make me feel seen, make me feel validated in my feelings, people who inspire me, people who make me a better person. Like I said before, I thought I was an angry person, but that's because I was surrounded by people who didn't make me feel understood and seen, people who made me feel I was too dramatic, people who made me feel like I was too serious. Just the wrong people for me. So it's truly life-changing doing the deep internal work. Like, anyway, I just finished chapter one. So I'm on page 27 now, my favorite number. But yes, so I'm going to end the vlog because I need to get going, but I feel so inspired right now. And I really hope a lot of you will pick this up. I mean, obviously I don't usually like to recommend books if I've only read like the first chapter, but I can't imagine it going downhill. Like this book has amazing reviews and just from, even if you just read this alone, like it's worth it. So yeah, absolutely cannot wait to continue reading that. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to go to casetify.com slash books with Chloe to get 15% off your order and get a cute casetify case. If you're looking for more content from me, I have a Patreon, which is always linked below, and that is where I upload extra content, like extra vlogs. We do a monthly live show, we do a monthly buddy read, etc. I have all my socials linked below, including my Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash chloebunny underscore. And that is where I stream games and just chatting. I hope you're all having a good day or night, and I'll see you in my next video.